So good morning or good night, depending on where you are, and welcome to another interview of The Shield Doing a Couch. I'm your host, Hector, and tonight I'm joined by Marcus. He's the guitar player for the band Black Cross Hotel, which has a debut album coming out on November 11 called Hex, and we're here to talk all about it. So first of all, Marcus, good night. How are you tonight? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So yeah, I... I I got to listen to the debut album and uh, I like that it's like an industrial with punk and horror all mixed into one. And I, I really dig it, especially because it has like, uh, it's more horror for the 80s. And I think when I think of like horror, I usually think of the 80s. So uh, tell us a little bit about like, uh, how did Black Cross Hotel form? Um, so my my uh, brother-in-law Andrew is in the band and uh, he's been married to my sister for a long time and we've known each other for 20 years probably um, and we had always kind of kicked around the idea of of being in bands together but we were both kind of busy doing our own things at different times and then um, just the timing kind of worked out where we were both sort of uh, you know found ourselves some free time kind of right before the uh, pandemic hit and uh so we started kind of kicking around some ideas um didn't really know what we were going to do we were just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and um i sent him a bunch of riffs and he and uh, mike from atlas moth are like a pretty tight unit so they uh organized some stuff and um we got uh, uh d on board for vocals and kind of started taking shape you know and then um it was really kind of one day, one uh, weekend that uh, Andrew kind of holed up at his uh, apartment and was planning on doing a bunch of writing. <clears throat> and he had, uh, he just had an endless loop of horror films on in the background. <laughs> and it just sort of bled into what he was doing. And uh, really that whole session and, and everything kind of just made everything start to make a lot more sense. And uh really kind of I don't know gave us some focus and once we got to that point then it was it just kind of took off from there nice and I read that you're trying to you're singing about like horror movies and stuff but you don't want to be like uh like some bands that do it it's like a gimmick and they dress like the horror movie you want to do it differently you you want to tackle more like story and like the atmosphere of those movies correct yeah um we you know really kind of like the aesthetic uh and the atmospheric kind of stuff that is, is done in a lot of horror films and uh uh john carpenter was a huge influence for andrew and 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 all of us and his scores and just to get kind of thematically what he does and uh and uh d's inspiration was cool like looking at a lot of those films but in in a non-traditional sort of sort of way you know his his writing comes from uh all kinds of different angles and he's he will like i don't know it's cool like the way he does it he'll explore themes that wouldn't really necessarily occur to you right off the bat um so uh, you know it's it's everything a lot of the stuff that we do is like horror film inspired and influenced but we like you said we don't want to be we're not trying to like be like a horror band themed thing um it's just kind of like where we draw a lot of a lot of inspiration from um and some of the lyrics even were like kind of kicked off by you know specific films but you know deal kind of take them and make them his own and, and run with it but the you know thematically a lot of them kind of start from the same same kind of place like that yeah i know that the lead single that you guys really shaped uh has to do more with the original halloween right yeah yeah, because that's what they call the shape, and they're screaming Nancy. I think Na was was Nancy one of the characters in the movie. I'm trying to remember. I, I don't. I, <laughs> I think Nancy was like the actor's name. I, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Um, yeah, because he screams it a lot in the in the song. Yeah, uh, yeah. I you couldn't remember if like oh who was Nancy in that movie. I, I don't remember if he took that from the actor's name or or just hmm. chose that name to not be you know super sort of drawing from the film uh to make it you know over the top obvious but you know just sort of like taking the theme from like the um 
um, you know, tw sort of twisting it around to being um, that he's he's being objectified rather than objectifying the the victims of the film because he's the one that walks around with a mask on all the time. Uh, D could do a much better job explaining his own lyrics, but uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I put you on the spot there. So, uh, so yeah, that that song is pretty cool. And so the name Black Frost Hotel. Uh, how did you decide on the name, and and what does Black Frost Hotel mean? So we were originally uh, called Guest, which we thought was a cool name, but we quickly found out that it was wildly inconvenient as far as like. Uh, you know, being on, on bills and, and, you know, we were a brand new band. So we we're always the last one on the list. And it always looked like it said guest on the bottom and it just looked like they didn't have a band for that slot. <laughs> so I, I will see the confusion. The confusion yeah. Yeah. There. So we kicked around a bunch of ideas to, to find a new name. And uh, I was doing one of the ideas we had since we were kind of killing the name was dead guest. And I started looking around around uh on the internet on that theme and found this uh story called the dead guest which is a short story from uh 18 late 1800s i think but it has to do with this um town in europe where every year this this mystical figure shows up and seduces a few of the you know wins over a few of the ladies in town and the next day they um have their heads all twisted around and he mysteriously vanishes with and leaves no trace and everyone knows about it but then the next year same guy shows up and the same thing happens um it's a cool little story but anyways the the story was called dead guest and the place that the guy checks into all the time is called the black cross hotel so nice we, that's where we got that name from Nice. And I know the second single that you released recently was Windows. Uh, what, what's Windows about? Um, Windows was uh, a, a working title that kind of turned into the title of the song. It's the the uh, name of the radio operator and the thing. And oh, yeah. The, I remember that movie. Yeah. So uh, Dee's idea for lyrically for that was to sort of write in the perspective, kind of from the perspective of the creature or the uh, alien or whatever and and sort of it's kind of made it about he saw he drew a parallel between that thing trying to mimic and fit in and not be exposed and you know being being like an outsider of a group or society or whatever and sort of trying to kind of fit in kind of you know kind of do the same thing so he wrote you know, wrote the lyrics from the perspective of of the of the outsider or the creature or the thing or whatever. Nice and yeah, yeah uh, your these vocals really reminded me of like Orgy and Marilyn Manson, like mixed together, uh, yeah. and the industrial and the punk horror vibe. So I'm gonna show the artwork for the upcoming album. Uh, yeah. Here's the artwork for Hex, and I I know it's called Black Cross Hotel, like a. Uh, uh, why didn't you use a hotel in the cover? We didn't want to be too literal with it, you know? Uh, we, yeah. There were a bunch of obvious sort of, um, you know, directions that we could have gone based on the name, but we didn't really, we wanted to kind of stray away from that and be able to just kind of use cool imagery rather than sort of yeah. like, you know, kind of nail ourselves down with a specific imagery that that the name might conjure up. Yeah, but that that's a creepy looking house. It's, uh, where's that house? I don't know. Uh, Dee's got a friend uh, who's a photographer who was nice enough to let us look at a bunch of stuff that he had done that he uh, didn't think he was going to use. And he he had a ton of really cool images. And uh, so we we picked this one and the photo on the on the actually all the photography for the art, the inside and the back was all uh, uh, photos that uh, we got from him. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool with the light. It it would have been super more awesome if like there was like a figure in the light. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it is a cool, you know, it's it, it you see that cover and you're like, yeah, it has to it looks like I wouldn't stay in that house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super cool creepy image and we all kind of latched onto it. Um and yeah, he the guy did really good work. I should I should give him a shout out. Ben Geyer. 
Yeah, no, yeah, he did a great, a great job. So uh, how has the reception so far for the band been? It's been great. Um, we did a, a four show kind of a mini tour with uh, Minsk um, and Sanford uh, Parker used to be uh, in Minsk and was uh, friends with those dudes and they were all super sweet and the tour was a lot of fun and they were all have all been kind of big champions of us since then, um, which has been really cool. Um, but the shows have all been uh, the receptions have been really good. Um, we've got a lot of good feedback. It's kind of fun to watch, um, watch the crowd, watch us and sort of figure out what's happening, <laughs> which has been uh, kind of a fun thing to see from the stage. But um, yeah, it's been, we've gotten really good feedback so far. Yeah. And I, and I, and I know you guys have the record release show. Uh, uh, I think, is it on the same day that you released the record? No, the record comes out on the 11th, uh, which is Friday. And then the record release show is on a Monday, the following Monday. The 14th. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, when I was listening to the album, I thought like uh, a tour with you guys and the birthday massacre would be very awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like the, it's like, I feel like the same type of vibes. Uh, so yeah. it would, yeah, that would be like a tour that I feel, I feel it would be a cool tour. Uh, yeah, just putting it out there that you guys with the birthday massacre would be a cool tour. Yeah, there's uh, a bunch of bands out there that are doing similar stuff that would make a make a cool bill. Yeah, there's a lot of bands that horror, like there's uh, more like the Ice Nine Kills, which do a lot of horror theme based, uh, mm -hmm. and there's so much about I, 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 that, I think that's one of the like the more modern ones that's been doing it, uh, and they tackle different things. So, yeah. uh, how long was the recording of Hex like, uh, for you guys? We did, um, we initially booked uh, four dates to record with Sanford um, before he was in the band. Um, it was just the four of us. And we did, uh, started working with him and just right off the bat, you know, could could tell that he really got what we were doing. And um, so we did those four songs and then he said he was interested in being in the band and we were certainly interested in working with him. So he got on board and then we uh, wrote four more and tracked those at uh, his studio as well. And a uh, studio called Palisade. Uh, we did some uh, live stuff and then tracked everything else at his studio. So it was like kind of mostly two different sessions, but we were, you know, pretty well rehearsed at that point. And everyone's really good at what they do, which is, which is pretty cool to, you know, play with a bunch of people who've been doing this for a while so um that stuff all went pretty fast so just a you know a couple of days here and there and and we got everything re recorded and Sanford put a lot of work into you know doing the mixing and stuff at his place and so it was really um for uh you know it, it's a short but it's a full length and you know it really didn't didn't take us a whole lot of time to to get it together which was was pretty cool yeah i know it, it's like eight songs almost i think like almost like 30 minutes in length yeah or something like that 40 minutes, yeah yeah but yeah it sometimes too, uh too long is bad but yeah i think the the flow of the album is pretty good so uh you guys being into like uh are you personally too into horror films i am yeah um i've been a horror fan for a long time um our it's too bad Andrew's not sitting right next to me. He's he's the uh, horror guru of the band, but uh, yeah, we're all we're all pretty big, you know. Yeah. Horror. What are your three favorite horror movies of all time? I'm a big fan of The Shining. Um, oh yeah, probably, probably my favorite. Um, have you read the book too? I have, yeah. And I saw the TV version too, which was interesting because that was the one that uh, Stephen King had to do with because uh, he was upset about the Kubrick one and always wanted to do it. Yeah, um, I know. He, what 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 was it that upset him? Uh, about the, I think something that they twist, they changed in the ending. Yeah, Kubrick changed, changed up the end. And I think he, it seemed to me that Kubrick wanted to make it a little less supernatural. You know, there's a scene in the book where like the, the uh, tree or the, the plant sculpture is outside kind of come to life. That he got rid of and um you know the book was sort of more 
about like the house kind of having its own or the hotel having its own like personality. Um, and he kind of Kubrick kind of changed it so that it was just more, more of isolation. Like yeah. Isolation and a guy kind of getting, you know, losing his mind a little bit rather than like, you know, any sort of like supernatural hotel shenanigans. Well, there there was ghosts in the hotel, but you know, I get it because maybe it would have looked corny right. <laughs> back in the day. So. And he did leave it a little bit ambiguous too. You could you could you know take yeah. from it that it's just I mean, it's just all him losing his mind, or you could take it that it was the you know hotel kind of took him over. But you know he, he sort of left it, but it made it a little more ambiguous than the than the book was. I think. Yeah, there's sometimes like in. Like, I don't know if you remember Jaws, uh, the movie, but uh, the book had a different, I read that the book in the, the book, the ending of the book, when Jaws is about to attack Brody, uh, the shark has a heart attack and dies. And Steven Spielberg said, that's very anticlimactic ending. And I'm glad he did. And I, I think the, the writer of the book said, thank you for changing the ending. Because you imagine going to a movie theater and the big ending and the shark has a heart attack and dies. Like, <laughs> come on, like the, like I think that's a that's a rare occasion where the ending of the movie is better than the book. Uh, yeah. Another one is Fight Club. I read the book and I watched the movie, and the movie's better. Like yeah. the ending of the movie is better than the ending of the book, which is rare. But in The Shining, I, I don't know because I, I could I see the changes. So Shining is one of your uh, favorites. Which which other two horror movies uh, are you really into? uh evil dead 2 it's been a i've uh, been a huge fan of that one forever um um god i'm just i'm blanking on movies now <laughs> i made you think too much i, Wonder, I know i'm under the night. gun uh yeah i don't know <laughs> that's okay we'll 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 go like we have two movies I'll think so, as soon as we're done with this i'll think of like five more Oh, yeah, th that happens. I put you on the spot. It's my fault. <laughs> so, yeah, Hex, you know, uh, I think the album is pretty cool. And it's super cool, you know, like having new, uh, a new band and super exciting because uh, actually you can do whatever you like because you have no expectations. People never heard you. They're hearing you now. So you could do whatever you guys wanted in this. And I know that it's going to be released first digitally. Uh, next week on Bandcamp. Are you going to have like the, the Bandcamp Friday specials? Yep. Yeah, but that's Bandcamp. something super cool that Bandcamp does, you know. Yeah, it's really cool. Artists. That's a good platform. Yeah, We've been yeah it is a good platform. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, I like what they do, but I find it like it's not that user-friendly to <laughs> to listen to. But yeah, what they do for the artists, it's pretty cool. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's good because it it gets artists paid for for your art which is always great so uh out of the other uh six songs on the album like uh which other ones uh you enjoy uh, a lot and that you think are very strong all of them <laughs> that's a good answer yeah i think hitchhiker is interesting yeah the that's one lovely. that that's a fun that one finishes play. the album. And I was reading that Hitchhiker is also uh, about another movie. Uh, which one is the Hitchhiker from? Uh, the character in The Fog, which I never... I haven't seen that movie, The Fog. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, yeah, I, I can't really... I can't really speak to that one uh, lyric-wise, but... Uh... It's been a really fun one to play. I and it really kind of kicked off. It was an early one too, and it really kind of like helped focus a lot of the guitar parts for me. Um, just because I was having a lot of trouble with that one, I couldn't really get my head around what to do with it. And uh, Andrew had demoed it was keyboards and, and uh, drums, and I find I just one day was I was kind of stuck, and I, I really was feeling like finishing it and uh <laughs> for whatever reason it just popped into my head what would Mick Mars do and so I just kind of did a big you know meathead guitar rift at the at the front end and that just sort of helped write the rest of the tune and I kind of 
lean back on that other times when I, when I get a little stuck and it's, it's helped out a lot. We've been trying to, we, we've tried to kind of keep, keep the sort of like trim the fat, you know, keep it simple kind of vibe. And that's sort of bailed us out of a lot of situations as far as like arranging and songwriting. Uh, yeah. Sometimes less is more like for the flow of the album and correct me if I'm reading, if I read correctly, but there's a cover of the misfits here for we are 138 and Randy Bly of Lamb of God is in the vocals as well. That's awesome that you got. Uh, how how did you hook up with Randy? He's a friend of Sanford's, and he actually was just in town. And at the same time, we were uh, demoing this, or not demoing it, but we were tracking it at Sanford Studio. Um, and it just kind of worked out. And he's he's a big Misfits fan and a fan of that song in particular. And Sanford just kind of asked him out of the blue, you know, what, what would you think about? laying down a track for this and he was super excited about it and came and and did it and was it was great yeah he comes from the the metal world but he's always said that he's a huge fan of misfits bad brains so having like i'm like i gotta ask him about this because randy bly is like one of like the biggest heavy metal singers right now so yeah yeah, that's awesome that you got him to be on your debut album so uh plus he's yeah i like he's always sounds great like uh life so so yeah i think you know that this album is an album that people that enjoy industrial punk uh golf will enjoy uh and especially with those uh people who like horror movies will also enjoy this as well so this is coming out november 11th so i i might since i have it i can try and do a full album review for the album here on the channel awesome that'd be great yeah, so I can get more exposure exposure to the band. Yeah, when I got the promo and I read, you know, like the style and I and I first what I do is like I hear the single because if I, if I don't like the single or stuff like yeah, I'm like yeah, I like it so I'm like yeah, I would like to to talk with these guys because yeah, it's it's got that cool uh vibe uh that I enjoy from because it reminds me of like late 90s to the 2000s when they when those bands were we're coming up. So uh, what can we expect from Black Cross Hotel in the near future? More. <laughs> More. <laughs> we've got uh, we've got almost a whole uh, record's worth of stuff uh, that we're working on right now. Um, we've already got we've already been working uh, about half of them in rehearsals. Um, so we're hoping this, you know, once this comes out, we can start you know promo this and focus on a new record and and just kind of keep the momentum up and will you keep with the horror theme base uh for the 80s or will you tackle different type of horror i don't know you know um uh d's been reading a lot about uh cults <laughs> lately so we might oh, go nice uh but i think you know as far as like the whole aesthetic that we have going on so far it's it's worked really well for us to this point and we'll see what happens when the record comes out but it's kind of felt really comfortable you know so what whatever we do in the future i think it'll probably be in a similar vein um and we're just kind of trying to get better at where what we're already doing nice so you will release it now digitally will you receive uh, release it like physically later on next year is there are there plans for a physical release yeah we do actually have cds uh that oh we yeah have. that's physical yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, so we have those and we're going to press some vinyl at some point, but um, everything's so backed up right now that it just uh, didn't make sense for us to do it at the time. But yeah, I know it's yeah. Everyone's so, having trouble. so we're hoping like, uh, you know, early to mid uh, 2000 or 2023, we'll have something on vinyl too. Awesome. So uh, Marcus, you know, it's been great chatting with you about uh, Black Cross Hotel and your uh, debut album Hex, which is coming out on November 11th. So, uh, anything else you would like to ask to uh, to say to, that, to the people who are watching this video? I uh, hope you like the record. We're really curious to see you know what happens once we finally get it out there. And uh, it's been great, man. Thanks for your time. I hope uh, hope you enjoy the record. Oh, and, I, I already listened to the record, but I gotta listen to it more. And 
do an album review for the channel. Awesome. So, so people, I'm going to show the artwork here one last time uh, for the album. Uh, Hex by Black Cross Hotel. So uh, do not sleep on the band. You know, there's great, cool, newer bands uh, coming out. And if the Birthday Massacre sees this video, take this guy on tours with you. <laughs> <laughs> Because that would be a cool combination. Like uh, I would, I would, I would go to that tour. Awesome. So, Mar Marcus, uh, I want to wish you best of luck in the album, and okay. and until next time, people. This is Hector, the Shield in a Couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you, and good night.